So God bless all of you wherever you are today listening to this. And I hope you've been blessed by the worship I know we have here in, uh, in this place today in person. So we thank our praise team for, for being here and, and sacrificing their time today to come out and, and do this. We, we, we do. Thank you. Our audience is applauding here and they just did a wonderful job. So look, unless you have been in uh, hibernation <laughs> or maybe parachuted in from, uh, from Mars in the last uh, day or two, all we've been hearing about 24-7 for the last several weeks now is the coronavirus or COVID-19. And so we were in a series of messages here at First Assembly called Get Over It, but because of the circumstances, God has really led me to bring to you a different word today. And I am convinced from the bottom of my heart that this is a strong word that is powerful and mighty, not because of anything that I'm doing, but because of it coming directly from the word of God and what I believe God has anointed me to deliver into this place today. And it will be a source of encouragement to you and it will be a source of something that you can lean into during these challenging times. So, you know, we all have heard about this, but I think if for a while everybody was like, yeah, we're sort of taking a look at it, we're monitoring things. Then when Tom Hanks and his wife got it, all of a sudden things just skyrocketed because I think it was somebody famous that got it and it got everybody's attention. Then the next thing you know, the NBA, the NHL, uh, Major League Baseball pushed their season back. I talk a lot about sports because I follow sports. but And then the NCAA basketball tournament. Come on, man, you canceled the NCAA basketball tournament? I couldn't believe that. One of my favorite times of the year. And the other thing that was one of my favorites is the Masters Golf Tournament. Maybe my favorite sporting event to watch. And they canceled that. So we knew it was quite serious. Uh, then the president shut down travel to Europe, which I think was a necessary thing, and I'm glad that he did. Uh, but Christina, my wife and I, Christina, have been planning to, uh, to, to take a trip to Europe. We've been planning for two years, saving our money, getting all of our plans together, had it scheduled for May. Now that's been postponed, and that's okay. That's a minor thing, but I'm just saying it's affected a lot of things, and that was something we were looking forward to. Now President Trump has, uh, I think rightfully so, invoked his military uh, authority in the Defense Production Act and in the national emergency and other things to help us get past this. And so it's a serious thing, and I'm thinking in times like this, as I've been kind of over the last couple of weeks particularly, it's just nonstop, you can't get away from it. Anybody you have a conversation with, that comes up in conversation. And I thought, where do we go? Where do we turn? So I started thinking to myself, where do I turn in times like this? And immediately, as soon as, it, as I started thinking in that way, after this whole thing ramped up and really went to another level where it became so serious, I... I, I just didn't know where else to go. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I went to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. So if you have your Bibles wherever you are, you can turn to that. That's where we're going to be today. There's 16 verses in Psalm 91. And we're going to talk about all of them a little bit today. But listen, I've been quoting it. I've been reading it in various translations. I've been declaring it. I've been, uh, I've been, I've been praying it mainly. I just decided that's where I was going to live. I even said to one person, I said, this, I'm just going to marinate in this, like a, like a seasoned steak or something. I don't know. I just wanted to, to just, just be absorbed and saturated in it. And I've been sharing it with a lot of people, and I just decided that's where I was going to be. And while people are freaking out about hand sanitizer and, uh, and, and toilet paper, of all things, and, and by the way, I saw something on the news that Sam's Club had a fist fight in the aisle over toilet paper. Really? Seriously? I mean, that's what it is. I mean, so I was like, man, everybody's looking for something. If you're fighting over toilet paper, there are people that have some real serious things that they're looking for. They're, they're freaked out about this crisis. I even saw one thing in the news that uh, some Hindu groups, not all, but some Hindu groups were actually drinking cow urine to protect them from this virus. And I hate to even almost say that, but I'm just trying to give you the extent of, uh, of, of what is going on. Now, just so you'll know, I, I'm not participating in that ritual, so I'm not, I'm not going to be doing that. But, but, th but this is the thing. Everybody's looking for something. And so I've made a decision. 
I made a decision that I am completely and totally going to listen to what God says. I'm going to do what he says. And what I find that he says, what is that? It's Psalm 91, amongst many other things in Scripture. But it's Psalm 91. We're going to read this today from the New Living Translation. And I am going to read it from the first verse, starting in Psalm 91, verse 1. This is what it says. And we, I believe, have that to put on the screens today. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you, listen to this, from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. We'll talk about fall at your side. Though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, I'm going to read that again, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No, listen to this, no plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. Now remember that, that's real important. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Look, you can absolutely applaud for that. I love this. I love this. So I've been, this week I've been claiming it, receiving it, applying it to my thought life meditating on it in my prayer life I've been internalizing it and as I've been doing it it just became more and more obvious this is for me and I'm going to tell you a story at the end of this message today that'll that'll prove it just happened yesterday but I, but but all week and I mean this is for me it's not it's important to know this is not about some future promise as many things in the scriptures are and there's nothing wrong with that as we look towards eternity and as we think about as we live our lives to, to be it to, to look toward heaven that's great it's wonderful nothing wrong with it but that's not what this is this is not just about an eternal thought or precept this is a right now today March 22nd 2020 promise it's for us today it's very important to know that so this is something that we can apply today in our current circumstances. And look, now most people are right now, they're bombarded with doubt and uncertainty. You can't turn on a TV or radio or even almost talk to anybody, go to a grocery store without being bombarded in that. And they, people are thinking, what about my job? It's a legit thing. What about my health? You know, uh, how long is this thing going to last? That's doubt, that's uncertainty. All of those things, maybe, maybe all of them or some of those things, you've asked those questions. I know I have. I've been thinking about it. But listen, today I want you to really hear this now. This is a right now word for you. This is a right now word for you, wherever you are. So I want you to do this. I want you to activate it in your life today. I want you to activate it. Not just read it and hear it and know it. But activate it in your life. What does that mean? It means take it, claim it, believe it, stand on it, pray it. Take it and make it yours. Take it and make it yours. Activate it in your life today. There's a spirit of the unknown that's, that's surrounding our world right now. It's just, it, it just is. It's gripping our world. And it was just a month ago, or a couple of months ago, that this country, the USA at least, was firing on all cylinders. You remember that, right? Everything's coming up roses. The stock market's up, no end in sight. Every, the, the economic forecast was bright. It's all going well. And in fact, I've got this headline, and I'm going to put it on the screen so those of you can see it. 
this, uh, this headline that says it's like the Roaring Twenties. How many of you remember the Roaring Twenties? First, I, I know, nobody. Oh, there's one back there. <laughs> but look at this. For stocks in the economy, welcome to the Roaring Twenties. And if you could see, it's pretty hard to. But at the bottom it says, look straight ahead for everything is looking blue skies. That's what that says. That was January 22nd. It was like two months ago. Is that, would that be something published today? Absolutely not. It's changed, man. And look, I want you to know, we know the coronavirus, COVID-19, it's a bad, it's a difficult situation. It's a bad thing, no doubt. But it's not any worse. In fact, it's not as bad as some of the things the psalmist was referring to and what he wrote about in Psalm 91. See, this is what we're going to talk about a little bit. And in fact, it's not as bad as what others maybe have faced in history. And I'm going to go through some of these things. I thought about maybe doing this or maybe not, but I am. So if, if you're upset about it, let me know later. <laughs> but there's a lot of things in history, man, that have happened that are far worse than what this is currently and what this is going to be, in fact. Uh, I'm not, again, it's bad. I'm not trying to minimize it. But in, in uh, 165 AD, it was smallpox. For 15 years, it ravaged the earth. In 541 AD, 26% of the world died because of a disease. In 1350, and I'm just heading some of these. In 1350, the Black Death, as it was known, one-third of the world's population, one-third of the world's population died. Now, I know everybody is sitting out there now saying, well, thank you, Pastor Billy, for the encouragement. I'm glad I tuned in. I'm glad I came today. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you like it because... Here's some more. The, the Russian flu in 1889 swept through. A million people died. The Spanish flu in 1918 started in China, moved all the way. I don't know how Spanish got the, 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 the luck of being named with it, unfortunately, but started in China, moved all the way across the continents and, and wound up in Spain, and it was uh, known as the Spanish flu. There are many estimates, but there were estimates as many as 50 million people died. In 1918 and in 1957 which historically speaking is not that long ago in 1957 there was a thing called the Asian flu and it claimed 1.1 million deaths worldwide 116,000 in the United States in 1957 so again I know you're saying well what does all of that mean well, well here's what it means in spite of all of this that's happening right now with this coronavirus I want you to know if you are wondering wherever you are, if you are wondering if there is power in what we are going to claim and what we are going to believe in Psalm 91 and what we're standing on as Christ followers, I'm here to tell you the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is an affirmative yes. There's power in the word of God. And his promises are true. And no matter what has happened in the past or what may be happening now, his promises do not change. There's power in them. There's a guy named Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Many of you may know who he is. He was a German uh, pastor, evangelist, author, very well known. In 1933, he preached a sermon in Berlin. This was just before Hitler took power, but yet the Third Reich and the Nazis, that was all a big gathering thing. And it was creating a huge amount of fear and uh, uncertainty in Germany at the time. And uh, great tension in Berlin. And in the city of Berlin is where he preached this message. You can look this up online if you want to. Uh, to look, you could read his whole sermon. I did, but it's, it's unbelievable. It's not very long to read, but it's, it's, it's powerful. But I took an excerpt of this, and we're going to put that on the screen. But I want you to listen to this. This is part of what he said in that message. But the human being does not have to be afraid. We should not be afraid. This is what make, makes humans different from all other creatures. In the midst of every situation where there is no way out, where nothing is clear, where it is our fault, we know that there is hope. Say hope. We know that there is hope, and this hope is called thy will be done. Yes, Thy will is being done. That's what we call hope. So do you ask, how do you know? And listen to this. Then we name the name of Jesus Christ, the crucified and the living one. 
He alone is Lord over fear. It knows him as its master. It gives way to him alone. So look to Christ when you're afraid. Think of Christ. Keep him before your eyes. Now think about what he said there. Fear knows him, knows the name of Jesus as its master. Fear has a master. And his name is Jesus. And as Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, he said it knows him. Fear even knows who Jesus is. And he knows him as his master. He's the master of fear. Man, if I was attending that service and that guy was preaching that, I think I would have jumped up on my feet and been like, Amen! I would have got excited about that. I wish I could say I was the one that preached that. <laughs> That's awesome. But it lines up with Psalm 91. It lines up with our text today, what he just said. It says the Lord is our refuge. It says we can trust him. It also says we're going to hide in his shadow, and that's a good thing. You know, kings in, 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 in history would tell you that kings, they had a saying that, that kings would, would cast a shadow over their people or their subjects. And they would cast that shadow to protect them, to give them shelter from heat and to give them... Uh, uh, protection from other enemies or things that might come against them or dangers that they may be facing. And so when the psalmist is writing this, he's sort of in that period of time where kings ruled. And the psalmist is saying here, you're in God's shadow. You're in that shadow. And he understands, God understands who is in his care. You know that? He knows who he's had assigned to him and who he, is, who he has in his care. He knows who you are by name. And in verse 4 in Psalm 91, it says this, He will cover us with his feathers. And I was wondering about that. And I thought about, you know, these, these mother hens that you see. And you can look up a picture of them. And they, when they have their offspring and there's a lot of little chicks there, what do they have? They, they put their wings and their, and their feathers around them. And they sort of cover them. Why are they doing that? Well, to take care of them, to protect them, to keep them warm. To nurture them. And that's, I think, the, the psalmist is saying there that the tenderness of God. His concern is not just about other things. He has a real tenderness. There's a love element for those in his care. If you're in his care, he, he loves you. There's a love element to what God has for you right now. A huge amount of love that he wants to, to give. And part of that is his protection. Because God knows that you're his. You're in his care. So I want you to get this. When there's trouble, okay, when there's trouble, we're running to God, or should be. When there's trouble in the world or in our lives, we're running to God. What we're trying to do is we're trying to tuck ourselves under that wing. We're trying to be in the shadow of the Almighty. We're trying to be in that, that covering where we're covered in that protection. We want to be under. Remember that word, under. We want to be under that wing, under those feathers. We want to be under his protection. But the psalmist doesn't just leave it there now. He doesn't just talk about the tenderness and the things. He gives some, some things in verse 4 about a serious fortification. If you look at the, the rest of verse 4, it says that God is our shield and our buckler. I don't know if a lot of people know what that is. A shield in those days was a very large shield. It was something that they would even put on their arms and they had to strap things together and, and, and it was very large to defend themselves. A buckler was a smaller shield that could be held in your hand and it was a lot more agile. So you would have the big shield for protecting you again, defending yourself against big things and the buckler for taking care of the, the little things. And it's like, that's what God, that's what the psalmist is saying here, that he's our shield and our buckler. That means that He's the shield to take care of the big things, and the buckler is going to take care of these little things that try to sneak into our lives. Doubt, uncertainty, things that we don't know what the future is going to hold, concerns that we may have. That, that's what that's talking about, and it's really talking about God saying this to me. This is how I see it. The psalmist is saying, but he's saying, look, God is saying, I got this. I got this. I'm going to take care of the big stuff. I'm going to take care of the little stuff. I'm going to take care of the big things. I'm going to take care of the little things. I'm your shield and I'm your buckler. Man, that's important. 
He's going he, he's to be tender and loving, but he's also going to give us the fortifications we need to get through this. Verse 5 says this, Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. See, this, the psalmist is saying, he is the God, our God is the God of the day and the night. He's the God of the day and the night. Listen, we can stop fear in its tracks because God's got us. He's got us under his protection, whether it's day or whether it's night. And this word is for you today. Because if you're wondering if you can make it, I'm here to declare to you today that he is the God of the day and the God of the night. He's going to take you where you need to be in the day and he's going to protect you at night. There is nothing outside of his protection. You can stop fear in his tracks. So you're wondering if you can make it. The answer again is yes, exclamation point. Yes, exclamation point. God's got you now. And the psalmist is talking about this protection. It's there for you. It's there for you. But please understand, I do want to make this point, that this is not an untethered protection. And by that, I mean there are requirements. It's not... The type of thing where you can say, well, I can live however I want. I can do foolish things. I can get outside and just sort of do my own thing. It's not a I can do what I want, when I want, how I want mentality. I know what that is because that's how I used to live my life. I used to live my life like that all the time. I do what I want, how I want, when I want. I'm in control of it. I'm going to do it my way. That's not it. It, it, it. You can't do that. You have to look. There's a lot of encouraging things, but you have to look at the entirety of the scripture. So this is a protection I'm talking about today that you're under while you are doing what God wants you to do while you're in his care. I was a little more silent when I said that. But it's okay. But let me say, it's not the other way around. You, you can't live for yourself. You cannot reject obedience to God's teaching and instruction. You, you can't, in other words, put it this way, you can't live in spiritual recklessness. You can't do that, and here's the reason why. There's no protection there. There's no protection there. We're going to talk about why here in just a second. See, the devil, when he tempted Jesus in the Gospels that was recorded, he actually quoted a scripture from Psalm 91 in there. He was like, well, you know, the scripture says that you know, you could toss yourself down there and the angels will save you and won't even let your foot be hurt. And, of course, Jesus was standing there and he could have said, Oh, yeah, that's right, man. I, I knew that, but thanks for reminding me, Satan. <laughs> it's a good, Psalm 91, yeah. But instead, Jesus, as cool as ever, I, you know, I, I just use language like this, I'm sorry. Jesus was cool, man. He was a cool guy. <laughs> But just as cool as he ever was, man, he just looked at Satan. Of course, he quoted a scripture back to him as it is written. But he was basically saying, look, I'm not going to tempt God. I'm not going to do that. I don't need to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it says that. But look, I know where the shadow is. I know where the feathers are. And I'm going to stay under his protection. I'm not going to listen to what you say. I'm going to live in his protection. I'm not going to do my own thing. I'm not going to live the way I want. I'm not going to tempt God. See, the devil knew Psalm 91 too. He knows it. He'll try to talk you out of it. <laughs> but that was Jesus at his best, wasn't it? That was Jesus at his best. Humble, but confident. He was humble and confident in the trust we can have in God. What a, what, I mean, just he, just he just dressed him down. In that, so I'm just saying to our to our congregation, our church, to 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 my life, I want us to live with that trust. I want us to to live under the shadow. I'm going to tell you right now, I am living with that trust. I'm declaring it for myself. I can't speak for everybody else. I'm living with that trust. I am living in that under that shadow. I'm living under the protection. You with me? I'm living under the protection. And because I'm living under the protection, because I'm doing that, 
I have the right and I have the authority to claim this over my life, over my household, over my family, over my business, over my church. I have the ability to do that. I'm living under the protection. I'm under the shadow. I'm tucked up under the feathers. I'm under. So I'm doing it, man. I'm claiming it. And I'm going to, listen, here's another thing. I'm going to, this thing about the untethered promise, it's not untethered. You have to do, there's some requirements. Look, I'm going to do my part, and God's going to do his part. I'm going to do my part, and God's going to do his part. I'm going to do social distancing like I did today. <laughs> I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to use hand sanitizer. But that's not what my part is. My part is to trust God. My part is to live for God. My part is to reject any fear that comes my way in Jesus' name. My part, our part, is to pray. And this is what I'm praying for, and I want you to join me in this. I'm praying for miracles of God, supernatural, to eradicate this virus. He'll do whatever he wants to do, and I'm fine with that. But that's what I'm praying for. Get rid of this thing. You can do it. I'm asking God to protect this community, this church, this state, this nation, this world. I'm asking him to do it because I know he's powerful enough to. I'm going to pray for God to heal anyone that may come sick in this church of, of anything, as we always do, but of this particular thing. And if they do get it, that they recover quickly. We're going to pray in Jesus' name for healing and quick recovery, for God to do his part that only he can do. See, he's the only one that can do that. But I need to do my part. You need to do your part. We need to do our part. We're going to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for wisdom for our leaders. We need to pray that fear be gone in the lives of everyone around us. So let's do our part. And then let's let God do his part. We need to claim God's promises, man. We need to do this. We need to claim them because they're promises and they're true. His promises say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. His promises say, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Promises say that no harm will come near you. His promises say, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> His promises are true. See, these are the things I'm praying. So what else can we do? Here's a couple of things we can do. One thing is that we need to do as a body of Christ, as Christ followers, we need to love our neighbors. And now more than that, we need to love our neighbor. That's a commandment, first of all. Philippians 2.4 says this. I believe we have this on the screen. Let each of you look not, to, not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. It's really important. There's a lot of scripture, as you know, about loving people, loving others as we love ourselves. But now during this season, let's show an extra measure of love to our neighbors. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. Make sure they're okay. Are you okay? If you're one of those people that were fighting, people that stands for toilet paper and you won and you got a few <laughs> extra rolls, you know, go over and say, do you need anything? Just ask your neighbor. Is everything okay? Do you need something? Why don't you just do that this week? It doesn't matter how many. Just pick one. Just checking in on you with all this stuff going on. Do you need anything? Are you okay? You might be surprised what happened. Do a little more of just loving our neighbors. And I don't mean just our physical next door neighbors, but it can be them. They're right there. Another thing is, let's be respectful of those that have different views. I felt like I needed to say this. There's a lot of people that think this thing is not so serious. There's a lot of people that think it's really, really serious. And I've encountered many people on both sides of that equation this week. And I just think I need to be respectful and believe that they are, we're going to encounter different views. And uh, here's the thing I wanted to say. Here, no matter what your political views are, no matter what your uh, view on how serious this virus is, anything else, let's get through this together let's get through this thing together let's stick together so be respectful you need to love everybody more be respectful and also be patient be patient with me there's some people out there that are fearful and you're going to run into them and the first thing you might want to do is well god said don't be fearful oh you shouldn't be doing that or that you know be patient be loving and kind and, and share the, the love of christ with them and all of this that's fine but be patient 
Because there's going to be people that are going to experience fear. So instead of, you know, be patient with them, but also speak hope. Speak reassurance. Speak life into their circumstances. And let's be effective as a church. As a church body, we need to do this individually, but as Christ followers, as a church, let's be kind, let's be loving, let's be generous to our neighbor. And God will bless that. He'll bless that if you'll put that into, into action. If I could have our praise team come up as we close. I want to just look again at verses 14 through 16 in Psalm 91. In this portion of the past passage, it is God speaking here. This is even one translation that says, the Lord says. So this is a, a prophetic word coming to the psalmist at this point, which most people believe in Psalm 91 was Moses. Um, although it's not, that's, there's some debate about that. But whoever the psalmist was here, this is the Lord speaking. This is God speaking. Now, in the previous part of the passage, it was being written uh, in a different context. This is God's words speaking. This is the amplified version. I think we're going to put that on the screen. And it says this, because he set his love on me. Now, this is God speaking. So because we set our love on him, if we love him, everybody, we will obey him. If we love him, we will serve him. If we love him, we will follow him. If we love him, we will live for him. So this is God saying, he set his love on me. Therefore, as a result of, I will save him. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. He confidently trusts and relies on me, God is saying, knowing I will never abandon him. No, never. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him. And I will let him see my salvation, says the Lord. See, this is God speaking his commitment to you. That's what he's doing there. He's speaking his commitment to you. And I believe God is saying to all of us, listen. I have been faithful to you. I've been faithful to you. And in the past, I've done it. And I will do it again in the future. I will take care of you. And I believe he's saying through this that you are protected. Once again, you are in the shadow of my wings. So I know, see, in my life this, I know he's been faithful here. So I know he'll be faithful there he was faithful in this he will be faithful in that and I know see I know that God can be faithful right here right now I know that because he's already done it he's gotten me through in the past he will get me through in the future I'm trusting you because I know you've been good and because you got me, God's got us. I want that to just ring true today. God's got us. He's got me. He's taking care of me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to be bound by fear. And look, I'm not going to deny, I am not going to deny that there's a lot of people struggling right now and suffering. There are people dying. I, I know I'm not trying to marginalize that or minimize that. But here's what I am to say. And I'm saying it unequivocally, God is taking care of us. As we sit or stand, wherever we are today, God is taking care of us. Wherever you're hearing this, God is taking care of us. And if my time comes through this virus or anything else, if it's tomorrow or if it's years from now, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God with my life. I am trusting God with my family. I am trusting God for everything in every circumstance. And listen, I'm staying in the shadow. I'm going to stay under the covering. So I'm praying right now, and I ask all of you to pray with me. I'm praying right now that we will live this out, not just do it, but activate it in our life, not just read it, but we'll live this out all the way, that we will claim this, grab this promise, and activate it in our lives, make it our own. Say, God, we desire to be safe under your wings and in your shadow. 
So God, I am praying right now for everyone in this place and everyone in the sound of my voice. I'm praying that we would be safe and that we would be protected under the shadow. I'm praying that the church would not be led by fear. I'm praying that we would look for new ways to reach out to our neighbors and to show the love of Christ to others. That we would find ways to reach out to be the church you called us to be. Father, I pray that people run to you in this time. I pray that you equip us as, as Christ followers, you equip us to run into the world with the love of Jesus. Motivate us, Father, to take care of our neighbor. Motivate us to share the love of Jesus because we're under the shadow. We're in your protection. We're in your care. And Father, I pray for any children, any little children out there that may be struggling with this and don't understand it or they may be scared or they may be fearful or any adults as well but I just pray let them know right now at this moment in their heart and in their spirit that they don't have to be afraid in Jesus name in Jesus name they don't have to be afraid because they're under the shadow they're under the covering they're under your covering and you are our caretaker we are in your care and I believe that, and I receive that. And church say that I believe that, and I receive that in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you a story really quick that happened to me yesterday. Thank you, Lord. Just help me get through this. A few days ago, I was talking with my dad as I do a lot of things, and I said, you know, I want God to do something right now, man, and something big that I can have as a testimony. Now, I've had a lot of those in my life. I can name a bunch of them, okay? I'll tell you one big one. When I was two years old, I was healed miraculously from an extended several hours of fever of 107. Off the thermometer, they couldn't measure it because I had the German red measles and they didn't know what to do. And they told my parents, they said, I want to prepare you. I hate to tell you this, but your son will not live through the night. And my parents, along with my grandparents and even my great-grandmother, was on the scene praying in the name of Jesus for me to be healed. And he healed me at two years old. And the first words I spoke to my mom as she was sitting there by my bed was trying to, trying to wait for me to wake up. And when I woke up, she said the first little word that came out of my two-year-old mouth was Jesus. Jesus. I've had testimonies. I've had miracles. Many of you know my story. I was delivered from an addiction to drugs and alcohol. I wasn't living under the covering. I wasn't under the protection. I was doing my own thing. So I prayed, Dad, I just want something else like that to happen. He had had something like that happen to him. Somebody gave him $5,000 in December. Not in our church. Just somebody out of the clear blue sky. He knew who it was, but just sent him $5,000. I'm like, something like that. It doesn't have to be money, by the way. It could be anything. Just something. Breakthrough on our property here at the church, whatever it might be. I said, God, Dad, I'm just, it was a conversation. It was just a few days ago. So now, as you know, many of us, my wife and I own a business, uh, a learning center, an early learning center. And because of this uh, circumstance, we, we've got some real business difficulties we're dealing with right now. And we trust in God, but it's in his hands. We're under the covering. We're under the protection. I'm in the shadow. So I'm trusting God, but man, it's, it's serious. It's a serious thing. And so we asked some people, look, you know, I mean, is there any way we could have some of the payments that we're going to owe you in April deferred out? And we, you know, trying to just plan and work ahead. And there's this one particular thing that we owe. It's 24400 and something dollars in April. Well, something I was a little bit that I was concerned about because I got payroll and other things. I'm trying to decide what we're going to do. Twenty four thousand. Could you could you put that out a couple of months? Could you defer that a little bit? And of course, Christina was working on this and helping and doing this. So anyway, these are just things that are going on. So I uh, I get a text yesterday from my aunt Martha, who's probably watching today, and she. Uh, she sent me this text at 11.48 a.m. and it said this, Billy, Christina, and family, please know each and every day 
we are praying God's protection over you and each one in your family during this difficult time. And the text said, in Jesus' name, we pray the coronavirus will not be able to come upon any of you. And she put a verse there, Psalm 91, 7. She didn't know I was preaching this sermon today. Nobody did that I know of. I think I told my dad on Friday that's where I was going to be in the text, in the scripture that, that it was going to be. And then she says, we love you all so very much. Be blessed. I got that 1148. I'm like, thank you, Lord. That's great. That's just a confirmation. And it just helps me know that this is the place that I need to, what I need to be preaching into our church today. And I know that you laid on my heart, but what a confirmation. Thank you, Lord. And by the time I got finished with that prayer, my phone rang. It was my wife. So I answered it. <laughs> I picked it up. She says, you want to hear some good news? I said, sure. I always want to hear some good news. She goes, remember that thing that we were talking about? They're going to forgive it. They're not going to defer it. They're not going to put it off to later. They're forgiving it. $24,000. I know that sounds like a lot of money, and boy, it is. But it's going to be spent on it's not something that's going in our bank account, but it helps us. You know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? And it's not about money. It could be any kind of thing that God does. Because God is faithful, that's why. Because I'm under the covering. Because I'm in the shadow. Because I'm in the wings of the Almighty has got me. And no matter what I do, as long as I stay living for Him and trusting Him and believing in Him, I'm under the covering. I'm in the shadow. And you can be today too. You can be today too. That's God. So I can't do this. This is it right here. I can't preach a sermon like this and not ask anybody if they need to be in that place. And if you're watching today, and if you're in this room today, I'm going to ask you, if that's you saying, you know what, I want to be under the shadow. I want to be in the protection of God. I want Him to be in caring for me. I don't want to be outside of that. I don't want to do anything. And maybe I've accepted Christ before, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not loving Him the way that He should because of how I live. Maybe it's that you never have accepted Jesus. I don't know. But either one of those can be settled right now. Right now. And so I'm going to pray a prayer. So wherever you are, if you're here or if you're at home or wherever you may be, you may be around other people, I'm going to ask you just by some action, just raise your hand or nod your head or some affirmative that says, I want that. I want to be in the protection. I want to be in the place that God wants me to be in. I'm going to pray with you now. So bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me for anything in my life that I have done wrong. I ask you to bring Jesus and his forgiving, precious power into my life at this moment, I pray. And whether I've lived for you before or whether I've uh, never accepted you, Father, I ask that you just forgive me right now and do as your word says. Not just forgive, but forget. Remove my sins as far as the east is from the west, you promised. Do that for me tonight, right now, Father God, I pray. And Father, I will do what I can do to live for you, to obey your teachings, to live in accordance with your instructions, to do the things that I want to, to do to please you and what you've asked me to do. And, 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 and as I do that, Lord, I ask that you bring me that you bring my family, that you bring anyone in my, my circle of influence into this life and bring them under the protection, that you will bring them under your wing and covered by your feathers, that you would, that, that, that you would keep us in the shadow of the Almighty. I ask that you would do that for us as we do our part 
And as I do my part, I ask that you would do your part. I accept you today into my life. I dedicate myself to living for you. And I do that in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to tell you, if you're someone that prayed that prayer, or someone that just wants prayer by this church, or you have some other need, whatever it may be, I'm going to ask you to do something. Most of you probably have your phones close by. We all typically do. You can take out your cell phone and text the word next, N-E-X-T, N-E-X-T. Text the word next. I think we're going to put that on the screen to the phone number 904-479-1555. Text the word next to 904-479-1555. And if you do that, I promise you, that this church and that I will pray for you today and that we will also follow up with you to see how we may be able to serve you in your decision or in your need, whatever that may be. And if this church is able to serve you, we will. And if we can lead you to a place, if you've made a decision to grow and to learn and to live amongst fellow believers, we can do that. We'll help you with that. So for whoever that is, if that's what you would do, just text the word next to that number and, and we will do that. And as we finish today, we're going to sing a song. And the name of this song is, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. And the victory is mine because of you. And so as we sing that, let's sing that with rejoicing in our hearts and confidence and trust in the God that we serve because He's on the throne and He is there to meet your need today. Father, bless everyone today as they go forward in their lives. Protect us, Lord. Keep us under the covering and under the protection, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause I know God and knows only how to triumph. Come on. My God will never fail. Yes, my God will. Turn it for good. You take what the enemy 
Turn it for good. Get to turn it. 